This is an install video for the BMS B48 intake system. Product photo here. These are the tools we'll be using for the installation process. And I'll go through those as we go through. On the Torx, you'll need a T20 here to remove the factory map sensor. Basic screwdriver. This is just a half inch or 13 millimeter socket. And then a couple Allen wrenches here. I'll We'll review the size as we go through that process. And this is the test subject, a 430, but the installation process for this is the same for the 230. And in fact, the process is basically the same for the B58 340 models and all other models that we offer this intake for. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take that. So the first part of this process is for the uh, B48 is to take off this plastic cover here. And it just pulls off essentially. It slides out. Let's tuck it out of the way. The intake that we're going to be replacing is right here. I think the best thing to do first, using our T20 Torx, is to remove the MAF sensor bolts and pull the MAF sensor out. That'll be relocated into the BMS intake. Be careful when you unscrew those so you don't drop them. I like to set them in the front here. Put the other side. If you have a hard time reaching these bolts, you can always do this part when the intake system itself is removed too. But when you do it this way, you don't have to unplug the electrical clip on the MAF sensor, so that saves you a little bit of time. And the MAF element itself just carefully pulls out. You can tuck that safely out of the way. The next thing we want to do is release, release these four clips here that hold the factory airbox down. And we're going to use just a long screwdriver for that purpose. We get a good view on this one. And there's one more hidden down here. You'll see these clips are all released, and with them off, the intake now lifts up. BMW is really clever with how they put this one together because rather than it being a hose clamp here, it's simply a twist lock clamp. So you'll push these two levers together and that releases the whole intake system. So this is the factory air box that pops out. And this is the factory filter that pops out. And we'll be hanging on to those for when you want to put the car back to stock Sunday. The next thing you want to do is prep the BMS intake for installation. You'll have the coupler right here in the MAF housing and the filter. You'll notice that they are obviously the same size. The filter slides over the big end here. And then you'll want to tighten down the hose clamp that secures the filter. It doesn't need to be super tight, but tight enough. You can also use a, um, a hex bit. If it's easier, I believe that's eight millimeter. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and pop out the machine screws in here. We'll be putting those back in shortly. This is the bracket that's gonna mount the intake. The intake is going to wind up fitting in here. The bracket attaches there, and that's going to lock down into this factory bolt right here. So the first thing I'm going to do is screw this guy in. A little tricky here with the camera trying to get the right angle. You'll notice that there's some flexibility in there. That's because there's some car-to-car -car variants. So you can tighten that, that up last when we have everything slotted in. That way we'll know that it's a tight fit. And this is a 532 uh, Torx bit, or Allen wrench rather, that's holding that particular bolt in. Let me pop that over there, out of the way. 
Next, we'll take out this half inch bolt here. Now this just pops right in there like the factory intake came out. And when you push fit it, it'll actually lock into place. It's a really neat design from BMW. That's, that's it, it's secured in. You'll see these have separated now. They've got an airtight seal there. Now we'll position this back over, lining the bolt hole up, and put that bolt back in that we had removed. Tighten that up. The torque isn't too particular on that, just want to do it until it's tight enough. Now the last step is to put back in the factory mass sensor. Remember we popped that out when we started. That slides right in there. If it's in backwards, it won't line up. So that appears to be backwards. There we go. You'll know it's in right because the holes line up. Okay. And we'll want to reinsert these machine bolts here and this is I don't know if I mentioned it it's a oh that's the wrong one there we go 764 allen wrench well sometimes you can use a small screwdriver if you don't have the right allen wrench handy you can just thread those in by hand and these things don't need to be very tight just you know a little snug this thing is not gonna go anywhere And finally, you remember we left this front bolt a little bit loose here to give us some adjustment. We'll go ahead and tighten that down now. Perfect. Now the last optional thing we can do is remove these factory retaining clips. Um, a lot of times it's easier just to leave them there. That way when you want to switch back to stock, they're there ready to go. If you do want to remove them though, just to clean up the look and the aesthetic of it, what you have to do is bend them down and then back around and you'll be able to pry them out from the bottom. In this particular installation, I want to leave them on, so I'm not going to do the full process here, but you push it down, back up around and sort of push it in and then they will pop out the bottom. Sometimes it's a little tricky. I'd rather not force on this one because we want to leave them on in this case. Now, we'll go ahead and remove the tools that we have. These are the factory bolts for the math. We'll wanna hang on to those for when we wanna go back to stock later. And the last step is to go ahead and put back on this plastic cover we've removed. And it just has two little grommets here. And this one's a little tight fit on this. The grommet will fully lock in sits over the intake bracket. So that's how it's supposed to sit. And installation is complete.